everybody, welcome live to the Jim Masters Show, Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. How is everybody doing? Great to see all your smiley faces. Welcome to our show. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series, where we're celebrating everything. Our guests come in from all walks of life, celebrity friends who stop by from Hollywood and Broadway, TV, film, stage, comedy, yes, culinary arts, sports, science and nature, health and wellness, life in general, and from all around the world. I am your host, Jim Masters, the host and producer of this series, where we've done almost a thousand episodes in about three years' time since we started this uh, monster of uh, extravaganza-ness of having all of you here. It's really a cool place to stop by if you're having a bad day, too, because we always have great conversations, and that's what we call them. You know, we really call this an interview show. We call this a conversational Dick Cavett, Johnny Carson sort of vibe with a modern twist as well. So for those of you watching for the first time, that's what this show is all about. We are here in the New York area along the southern New England coast between New York and Boston in the United States. That is where this show comes from. I work in television, radio, stage, and film professionally and started this series, The Gym Master Show, live about three years ago as an extension of my busy daytime work in television and radio. And it's been golden ever since. We've met so many fabulous people who are sort of like our studio audience. That's you, the viewer, watching and supporting and sharing and tagging and liking and celebrating this unique special show that we have, which is on just about every day and coming at you live here. And uh, it's a cool place to come. Great guests, terrific conversation and interactivity. What does that mean? Well, that means that if you want to comment while the show is on right now live, you can do that. So there's a couple of ways you can comment. You can comment when the show is on live in our exclusive JMS Lovety Hall chat room. That's the chat section you see on the right side of the screen on the YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. And you can chat. Yeah, you can do that. That is a gift for all of our JMS subscribers, those who subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV right now, or who have already subscribed and are still subscribed, you can act, which costs nothing. Just so you know, I know you hear that word subscribe. You think, oh, what am I in a membership or something? No, it costs nothing. It's just hitting subscribe, which means you're following us. You appreciate what our series is doing and delivering. So when you subscribe, you can actually comment right now, say hello to one another, and uh, you might even say hello to us too, because we might pop a comment or two on the screen. And if you want to support the series, a lot of people ask about how do we support the series? Well, it's very easy to do that. Uh, in the Lovety Hall chat room when the show is on, you can uh, do a super chat, super sticker, super emoji. You see it at the top of the chat room. There is this sort of... Um, area where it shows you all the different ways that you can do that. And uh, we appreciate that. And some of you have been doing it even when the show is not live on our YouTube channel on every episode. There is something called Super Thanks. It's a heart icon on every episode. And you can actually click that. And when you click that, yeah, it helps support our series. So thumbs up, subscribe, comment, like, love what we're doing because we love all of you. And boy, do we have an amazing guest. Now, we have been um, sort of promoting our guest, you know, the last several weeks that uh, he was coming on live and direct from New York City, from his studio. He's going to perform 
live for us as well. And many of you asked, because he's a world-renowned mime, will it be me just talking <laughs> and he will just be on the screen and he won't be answering questions and there'll be no interaction? No, he will be talking, but he's also going to be performing. And we have some exclusive videos as well of other extraordinary performances uh, of him doing his thing. One of them is a duet as well. Um, it's really incredible. And his name is Greg Goldston. We are so honored to have him here on the show. Uh, again, if you love mime, if you love this kind of artistry, one of the best in the industry right here exclusively on the Jim Masters show. In 1975, Greg saw a performance of the incomparable legendary Marcel Marceau and immediately began to pursue the art of mime. Born in Los Angeles, California, Greg first trained under Richmond Shepard in Hollywood, then moved to Salt Lake City. And by 1979, he had written and produced three two-hour solo performances. He opened his own mime studio and began touring his show throughout the Western states of the United States. In 1980, the Ohio Arts Council encouraged Greg to relocate his mime foundation and school for mimes to Ohio. And then from 1980 forward, Greg continued his one mime show across the United States and later internationally. In 1986, he created the Invisible People, which is a seven-member mime company that toured nationally and internationally until 1997. In 1980, he founded the Goldston School for Mimes Summer Intensive in Ohio. And the school hosted five two-week summer seminars by the legendary Marcel Marceau himself, who stated to the press, Goldston is creating the first generation of American mimes. In 2000, Greg was an assistant professor to Marcel Marceau during his 2000 and 2002 USA tours. In 2004, Greg performed lead roles during a week of the final performances of the Marcel Marceau novelle. Incredible. This I'm going to tell you about this in just a second because I want him to really describe what this is. It's something very special and near and dear to his heart. And I don't want to give everything all away. But I will just let you know that in 2000, he grew, he moved to New York City to the Big Apple and he presented his performance and continued to teach mime and comedy at his own New York mime studio. And in 2007, Greg and the Haruka Moriyama co-founded the Funny Bones Mime Trio. That's right. For the Lincoln Center's Meet the Artist series. And in 2014, co-authored a new show titled The History of Modern Mime. In 2008, Greg created the School of Modern Mime Summer Intensive. 2013, Greg and Haruka created the Goldston Moriyama Mime Intensive and staged a two-week intensive in Rome, Italy. And in 2014, they held a second intensive in Berlin, Germany. Beyond his work with the mime world, Greg's teaching and directing credits include the American Ballet Theater Summer Intensive in 2006, Mime Coach for Anne Hathaway for the film Ella Enchanted, and also a mime coach for the legendary film star Julie Harris for a stage play entitled Hanging Fire. Greg also created two short videos for the Sesame Street show as the gold mime titled K is for kite, V is for violin. And in 2015, he premiered his first full length evening performance, Weeping in Silence, at the 15th annual Mime Art Festival in Warsaw. That's right. Currently, Greg Goldstein and Haruka are working to take the Weeping in Silence style deeper by co-authoring a full-length company performance titled Sonatas of Love. It's really exciting. This is just the short list of an extraordinary career gang that we are celebrating here. And we're going to have live performance. Hey, get on the phone, email, text, WhatsApp, whatever you want to do. Tell your friends and family, colleagues to tune in to the Jim Master Show live right now because we have an extraordinary legendary guest. And we're coming at you live. We're going to have a good time. Don't forget, you can comment, like, subscribe, all the rest. But uh, this is really, really cool stuff. Just want to show you a couple of quick photos. 
Yes, some of them we have used, you know, in the uh, promotions as well during the course of leading up to this episode of the Gym Masters Show series. And I love that one. We use that in our center uh, promo piece as well. Here are some other fabulous shots of Greg doing his thing. We're going to talk about these, of course, you know, as we go along. But uh, really, a, an epic performer, a real master of his craft. So he's coming to us from his studio in New York City. He's very excited. We're excited as well. A lot, without further ado, it's such an honor and pleasure to welcome somebody as renowned as Greg Goldston to the Gym Masters Show. Greg, welcome to the show, my friend. An honor and a pleasure. It's such an honor for me to be on this show. I've heard so much about it, and, and I'm just so happy to be here and demonstrate, speak about uh, the art of mime, which is as much as people know the word mime, the details, what's hiding within this art form that makes it so special is sort of uh, what I love to discuss and tell people about because they're always, really, you know? <laughs> So I'm I'm so happy to be with you, Jim, and welcome everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you. Absolutely, our viewers watching internationally around the world, love it. He's commenting and uh, celebrating as well. Uh, you know, it's funny because I was saying when we were teasing that you were coming on, they're saying, "Okay, you're bringing on Greg, this world-renowned mime." Are you? Is it just going to be you talking, and he just going to be doing movements? <laughs> Will it be a one-way conversation? And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> I could but, probably but, answer but then many again. <laughs> without, without a word with my whole uh, nonverbal gesture system. Yeah, that's right, because you're so good at it. What, you know, when you were a kid, were you inspired even as a kid? Did you love the mime artist? Of course, the Marcel Marceau's. And were you always in tune with this early on as a kid? Actually, uh, I was uh, raised by parents who really didn't have any artistic background. I mean, my joke, which is a real thing, is the only thing we had in our, the only creative thing in our house was Elvis's uh, Blue Hawaii album and, and his Christmas album. <laughs> I, I mean, I never went into a theater until uh, friends took me to see Marcel Marceau. And at that point, I was 18. However, I do remember this. You know, later in your life, you could trace stuff back. And there was a show. Uh, if you're young, you may not have heard it of Red Skelton. Absolutely, he, yes. Right? He used to have a one hour uh, variety show. And, I, and the last 15 minutes, he did something that he called the silent spot, where he had props and sets, but it was all nonverbal. And I remember now that I would sit in my bedroom doing whatever kids do, you know, playing, listening, and watching the clock and and for the last 15 minutes i'd run to the living room and watch just the silent spot i didn't watch any of the other part of the show and and so i must have had some innate love for it mm. but uh, again a lot of people will see me like you see that photo uh that you just showed with the umbrella people will come up and go you must have had ballet and i didn't you know i picked it up by osmosis um, but I trained like crazy. A lot of people think this is natural. Mm. And uh, I always have to tell people, no, it's this is the most unnatural art form. <laughs> because you take real life and have to stylize it. Yes. Um, and and uh, dancers pick it up pretty quickly because of they have a technique. If you say, you know, twist your ankle they know where their ankle is. And sometimes, and I don't, don't take me too seriously, but sometimes I'll tell a new person or an actor, I'll go, well, twist your ankle. And they'll say my ankle, you know, and I say that as a joke, I'm not against anyone in any art <coughs> because throughout my 40 plus year career, I have studied to some degree, all the different arts. 
Uh, yes. Music especially, because yes. mime, when you're not speaking, you have to say things that are sort of like musical notes, right? Or a little bit of vibrato here and... Uh, Yes, exactly right. I love that sound effect you have uh, going on behind you. <laughs> oh. Welcome to the Bronx. Okay. That's, yeah. <laughs> I live, I live, uh, Caddy Corner is one of the most uh, important hospitals in the Bronx. So sirens are something. Oh, and I yes. want to tell you what I did. Uh, this is just boring, probably. Not at but all. my neighbors above me play Spanish music. And they play it very loud. I mean, sometimes my light bulbs in the ceiling shake. Does it ever inspire you to create no. a routine at all? No. It's not the kind of music, uh, you know, 4-4 four, four is not so mimetic. Jazz is more, you know, uh, yeah. here, here's how we would put it if we were talking about music, um, which we are now. Yes. They say, you know, music is basically in 4-4, four, four, okay? It could be 5-4, you know, which is take five. But they say that jazz musicians, they don't play on the count, that they play around the counts. And yes. That's, and in mine, we do the very same thing. And this is why often when I'm teaching, I, I have to play them, my people certain certain songs that we'll do warm-ups to and uh this is <laughs> my That's favorite it. move i love it i will give you an example um now and stop me whenever i talk too long no oh, not at all we're loving this my my teacher marcel marcel he he said to uh some tv host he goes, well, the last thing you want to do is get a mind talking because we just won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> and now I realize I do that too. That's it. Um, but there was a person named Etienne de Croo, and he invented what we call modern mind. And they named it that. This was in the 40s, 50s. They called it that to separate what you see me do or Marceau do to separate that from Commedia dell'arte or, or uh, the mimes of Greece and Rome and, and all that because the crew switched around the priorities of theater and therefore this. Okay, so figure that out and uh, you get a free class or something. Um, so Dig, what De Cruz said and why I brought him up is he said, if you're moving in real time, meaning this is real time, you're not doing mine. And so he meant that we move either slower than real time, which is why a lot of people will equate mine to slow motion, just intuitively, or we will move three times as fast. And mm -hmm. why I say three, because I figured this out. If you move twice as fast, it, it still is a real time. Mm -hmm. So triple fast, right? Right. So here is, uh, I call it off the clock. I'm not moving TikTok. All right. So what the heck? Here we go. So here is, I always have to show it, uh, what we say is wrong. Okay. So you can see the difference. Otherwise, what we do is so subliminal, you can't really notice it. And that's on purpose. It just looks natural. Okay. But anyway, let's imagine I go into a cafe and order up cup of coffee. Okay. This is a bad dog, meaning I'm in real time.
Okay? Now, I always say, it's not that that was bad, okay? But this is better. So this is off the clock. <coughs> like a visual music. Oh, sorry. So you see, every gesture or, <coughs> we will say phrase, like line, lines of sheet music. I will, I will have a pause. And in the pauses, it's not just for the musicality of the play, but typically, sorry, here's an epiphany that everyone will understand. <clears throat> it's an epiphany that I bring it up now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it happened on the Jim Master Show. <laughs> What's that? I'm glad the epiphany happened on the Jim Master Show. Great <laughs> hey, like time. The conversation got me inspired. I, That's it. I, how we say? Levity. Levity. Levity, yeah. I love it. See, this is what I, I get turned on about. Yeah. Like I, I say, I don't say epiphany is the word, but I go, it's epiphionic, which is not really a word. It's like levity. I love the sound mm -hmm. of words. So anyway, I was, boy, I, I, Jim, I made a list. This is great. <laughs> yes. I and, did you, and did you check it twice? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, more than that. Um, you, you have a anyway, lot running through, don't you? A lot. Well, I wanted to pick out, honestly, I know this is a very special show and the, yeah. the readership, the viewers. The viewers, yeah. Is broad. Yes. And often, so I go backwards, um, often... When you see mime, especially because Marceau's passed away, uh, you see <clears throat> beginners on YouTube, and I will call them beginners. Maybe they're people have been around a while, but they didn't have the teachers I was fortunate to have, being the generation I grew up in. <clears throat> but Yeah, you could stay large. I come to say mime is about thought. That's why we don't speak, because we've learned how to show a thought process that you could type out just like writing a book, this to this to this. A thought, a sentence, and therefore paragraphs and chapters. So, uh, what I was about to do is show you, well, if you rewind, if you tune in tomorrow, um, you'll see that the second version of my cafe, you saw a character because I was thinking. The first version was more about some mime guy just showing that he could make invisible things okay and yes that sounds a little uh but this is a problem when you see mime that's just showing illusions big deal so i will use uh on youtube which i'm sure uh jim will post at some point uh youtube slash gold mime one word 
Uh, lots of videos are there. In fact, Jim uh, is going to show a bit of. Okay, but this is mine without font. Okay, and it's easier for me to show with an illusion than me in a big environment. Okay, so here's what we call thoughtless. Now, of course, you're entertained because, but I showed no thought, and you can see this all over YouTube, unfortunately so. If I keep looking at this object, then you see me looking at an object. You don't see me thinking about this object, that Juliet out there, this secret. Okay, <clears throat> so I call it the look away. It's an obvious term because to show I'm thinking about this, I have to do that. I have to look away from the thing, whether it's a real thing, as I said, or it's Juliet. Here's, uh, I, I say good dog, bad dog when I teach, because I don't want to say to my dear students, that's wrong. I just hate to say that. They hate to hear it too. So anyway, uh, Juliet, bad dog style. Now that's how beginners start. Then they learn to put a thought process over that meaning like sheet music of an orchestra. But if I only keep looking at Juliet, you think I'm an, oh, Juliet bought a new dress, right? Because I'm examining. This really turned out to be a class, okay? So dig it. Here's how it should be done. By looking away and showing how I think and therefore feel. Okay, to show my emotions where they come from, from our thoughts, not just a move. Okay, <laughs> this is what makes mine so great and what it makes it hard as well. Okay, Juliet. The beauty, which is why we don't speak, is what I did subliminally, is I, as I just mentioned, I'm spelling out sentences with the way I'm doing my gesture, right? It's a four beat gesture system, okay, that I sort of um, codified. Um, but when we do this successfully, you start, your brain, without even trying, automatically starts putting in the words. Oh, what's he say? Oh, I think it's a girl. Well, it looks like a girl. Look how he's feeling. Oh, look, look, when he touches her hair, I could almost see the color of her hair and what he think, you know, and so forth. You see? Yeah. That's and I like to say in this way, Okay, it's another gold bonian kind of thing I say, is therefore a mime can move or perform, is a better word, at the speed of thought. I can go as fast as you can think. I can't go faster, right? Or you get confused. But an actor, uh, and no offense, I mean, I love acting. In fact, I 
caption Broadway musicals on tour as a side job. Um, the an actor has to be in real time, right? Because of the speech. Otherwise, which comedians will do, and I love it. Well, you know, I go, go, right? That that's bending the clock. So I hope that uh, makes a sense. It really does on so many different levels. What was it like when you, for you, when you initially met the master Marcel Marceau and had an opportunity to interact with him at such levels that you did? What was that like for you? Extraordinary, huh? Yeah, I, I will tell it briefly. As I said, I never went to theater as I grew up. I have to say, because it's funny and true. <laughs> Well, truth is usually the funniest. Yeah. <clears throat> Even in high school, when there was a school assembly, I would ditch. We would just go do something else. I didn't want to go see some play. And what's the curse of that? Now I am the school assembly. Okay. That's I can't right. ditch. Okay. But anyway, One of my best friends, uh, he had a little improvisational group, and that was the first time I was doing any uh, performing kind of thing. It was very, you know, I'm a son of a carpenter. So uh, he said this, okay? I hope these are funny, okay? Because I'm trying to be entertaining. <laughs> you are. Our son Marceau is coming to town. I grew up in Los Angeles, and he's coming in to... Uh, <clears throat> to play a show. I never heard of him. I never heard of ballet. Okay. So heard of Elvis though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's he's telling the group, he goes, Marcel Marceau is coming to town. You have to see this man. He could take his hands and and hold them in a way you know he's holding a rope. And I thought, why do I want to go see some guy hold a rose? I mean, it wasn't like that to me. And this dates me very well. Uh, of course, I'm 66, so there's your date. Um, <laughs> so they don't have either. to Google it or, or research. You've, you've said it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I saw Marceau the same year the famous film called Young Frankenstein came out which I loved and laughed through the whole oh, thing. Oh, okay. Gene Wilder and yeah. yeah Marty Feldman. Oh. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so I go to this because two friends took me. Uh, we go watch Marceau. And I was so stunned. My first, my first thought was, this is funnier than Young Frankenstein, okay? But I went home and the next day I'm trying to practice walking in place and uh, standing still like his, uh, he had a guy who would hold a title card. You could see this in certain photos uh, on the internet that would say the mask make or something. And, and the light would come up and he would be totally frozen for about a minute. And then the light would go down and he'd run off stage as Marcel came to do the play. And 20 years later from meeting him, I was holding that title card, which is part of the story you're asking about, Jim. But anyway, it took me 10 years to meet him personally. I would go knock on the door. No, he's too tired. We're leaving early in the morning. You know, 10 years, so much so, I, I just quit trying to meet him. I once baked him a Bip birthday cake when he came to my, the town I was living in. Bip was his character. <clears throat> and thought this, uh, he'll definitely have to say thank you. And nope, he's too busy. All right, anyway. <clears throat> so 10 years later, I had this girlfriend and uh, she was a grand dancer, not in the company, but that was her style of dance. And we were in Berkeley. I was doing a show up there and Marcel was playing there. She said, we have to meet him. I'm like, I don't. I'm tired of knocking. Okay. She was maybe quite pretty or something. Because when she knocked, 
oh, come right in. <laughs> come right in. <laughs> and so there's a very small group of people around Marceau in like his, uh, the green room. And he turned and walked towards me and her name was Janine with a walk that I'll never forget because, you know, he's off the clock, right? Coming at you. Yeah. And in three minutes or so, the way he stared at me, he, mm. he said something. And he says, do you believe that? I forget what the question was. But he stared at me and I stared right back and said, I do. And he goes, I can tell. And then he said, I have to go. But next summer, I'm doing a two week workshop in Ann Arbor come up. Uh, my school was in Ohio, summer school. And he invited me up for a day to have lunch. And he couldn't do lunch. He said, stay till tomorrow. And then on the third day of canceling, he said, stay for the rest of the seminar. And that's where we first bonded. And the next summer, he came and taught at my summer institute. And that's where that all began. There he is. Look at the eyes, see? Yes. As stunning as this, look at his whole position. But you cannot look away from his eyes. Right. Because this whole pose is his thought. And he used to teach us that. He goes, look, you can never have your body in a position that upstages the thought that you're trying to show or your eyes, okay? Eyes thought it's uh, sem uh, semantically we're saying the same thing. Right. And, but yeah. Incredible, huh? I Absolutely. had to stand next to that when I was in his company. I or mean, so you know. More so, yeah. He uh, lived in 92. He, in, in his heyday? Yeah. Uh, he was doing 300 shows a year around the world, year after year after year. 300. Oh, I wow. I know. It's like the Jim Master <laughs> show. <laughs> yeah. I, I can sympathize with Marcel Marceau. <laughs> yes, yes, you sure can. I, I couldn't do it, Jim, like you do. Did you ever meet, there was another uh there was a couple that were very, very Robert popular. Shields and Yarnell. Shields Lorraine and Yarnell. Yarnell. Yes, especially yes. in the 70s and the 80s. And they they were so famous. And he said, he said to me, we're, we're friends still. Uh, he they invented this character. I forget their the clinkets or something. And they were two robots, like a married couple. And they had a three minute bit they did on some talk show. And before they knew it, they had a prime time show on television for two years running. And he looked at me once and said, you know, had I not created that three minute robot play, I, I, I'd be still working the street, you know. But he's a very nice guy. Uh, They That's all really I have to say about that, Jenny. Yeah, they really were something. Uh, they were, and and so probably and like you said, right? There was some, sort of that um, robotic quality that they had um, that was amazing, uh, and I think they also introduced maybe mind to a whole other. Oh, yeah. generation because of having the television series exactly and prime prime time and it was a variety show like in and during those years there were a lot of variety shows you so sunny and Cher that. and captain and tenille yeah. and you had all of them yeah. non-human they they wouldn't blink for three minutes right that's right yep and she was a dancer before she met robert so in the series, she she would do, you know, tap dance and, and stuff like that too. You know, variety show. There they are. Yeah. Yeah. They were quite amazing as well. Uh, you know, you teach mime today. Where does it stand in terms of um, 
society, of popularity, of interest. I mean, it's an extraordinary art form. Where do you find it? Is there an, uh, an increased desire for people to learn it? Where, what is the state of it now? <clears throat> um, it's a great question with a sad answer. Um, not that sad. It was most popular, and Marceau used to say that because he was from France. He said, mine is most, the most popular in the world is in America, okay? And, <clears throat> and over time, like stand-up comedian, and this is, this is what uh, I compare it to that lets people understand. And remember, there was just a few stand-ups on TV. Then there became Comedy Central. That original Comedy Central was just stand-up comedians 24 hours a day. And everybody thought stand-up's easy. So they would get up there and be quite terrible at it. And people started to think, well, I don't really like stand-up anymore. Well, the same thing happened to the art of mime, and it began with the Dustin Hoffman, uh, what was it called? I think it was Kramer versus Kramer. There's a film, and there's some street mime in uh, outdoor mime performing in Central Park, and that's Dustin Hoffman's mad because of his he's getting a divorce, and he pushes the mime, and then that became uh, the down and cartoons about you know, so. However, at the same time, people were in love with it. It's yeah. just that publicly, it was like like comedians. It, it became hit for them to make fun of a mime. Okay. Right, right. And and this had a bigger, and Marceau used to say this. He would say it to a class. He'd say it to me at a restaurant. He would just go, you know, Greg, it was the street mimes that had killed us. Because they were just new people with, you know, maybe they had one or two mime classes, right? Not years. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they wouldn't be showing the art. You can't show the art as an art in the street. And I equate that. To, imagine we take Mikhail Baryshnikov, we put him in Central Park and say, show us ballet. And he could do a few jumps, right? right. He can't show the whole Cinderella right right because you need a theater and you need a theater to do mine so in america it's low but there is a new group coming because people will call me say i want to come to your classes and i'll say well where did you see mine what made you think this they say i never have i just know i want it i just know i want it right that's amazing huh and, and I'm coaching a lot of stand-up comedians because they've discovered I have what they need, meaning there, <laughs> there's a stand-up. Okay. Uh, and he does have to stand up for this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a stand-up. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> you can write that down and use it. <laughs> I will. It takes a village. <laughs> All right. So here's the, I, I teach stuff that people normally don't teach. All right. And I'm not, and, and because people don't think about this, like I love specialty. Okay. So a normal actor, stand up, whatever, public speaker. <laughs> See? public speaker, um, they'll walk on like this, grab the mic, and ta-da. Whereas I teach them, wait, your show started here, not there. So look. See, in my entrance, everyone got to know me. Everybody. Most comedians, sir, I, I can't stand it when they do this. Hey, how's everybody? What are you doing today? How you been? Right? You feel late as audience. Okay? And this is very physical. 
stop me, Jim, whenever. Um, actors, and I just use them as an example, public speakers, you name it, humans, will stand like this. So I'm flat. You don't realize I'm flat. I might have said 3D earlier. I mean this. See how I how all of this black stage area became alive? Now it's me. Or I'd like to say this. I'm in your space. Now you're in mine. Just by how I shape my physicality. Here's boring, right? Here's uh, magnetic. You see, and this is much uh, more I'm swagger, much more confidence. Yeah. Yes. Everything. In fact, I'm making, I've told Jim about this, everyone, but some of my friends talked me into doing this. Not that I didn't want to do it. <clears throat> I'm making a five chapter video series and it's called, uh, if you could see that physically speaking, it's not designed for minds, although minds will learn. It's everything I've learned from being on stage for 40 years for two hours without a word, like I just showed you. Okay. Oh, thank you. What is I this like? That. Yeah. I Did you, you drew that too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that too. This is incredible. I, so, I this is my favorite. That is beautiful. This is this is uh, Haruka. <laughs> violin for Deborah. Har Haruka, is, she doesn't play violin. She's Asian though, Japanese. She's my uh, 22 years. We've been together as a uh, duet. Uh, I'm uh, put it this way. If you're thinking, um, I am the uncle of her 15 year old son. Okay. Wow. So uh, she's married to a jazz pianist who played with Oscar Peterson's band. Yes. Uh, so the kid's yeah. quite smart, <laughs> son of a music, <laughs> jazz musician and, and son of a wife, dance, a mime dancer, mom. How amazing. Anyway, so I'm making this and it's, it's about how you walk on, how you walk off. Just, just like that. I teach this. I teach this to comedians. Here's how you approach a mic. And then how do you make your hands reflect what word you're saying? Yes. Or this. And even uh, one section in one of the mo uh, chapters is about how you play on camera since zoom is so big and and all these uh <clears throat> because most people are like this they forget their own the whole, and they never move i call them the talking heads yeah. right am i on are we live am i on or, can, you, can you hear me <laughs> yeah that's what they do right or they're do they really no, you know really. there's a head i say but watch if I show you my just down to my elbows, look at the difference. And why I have this chair is because, hey, I'm going to make a point by pivoting. What? You see, this is physically speaking, not just talking with your lips. Okay. Like a robot. So, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I call. I. When I go to coach, I say this. I have several suitcases, okay? And this one is for stand-ups, meaning I don't show them the whole art. They don't need to walk in place or do certain things, but they need this and this and this and this, okay? And then, oh, public speakers. Well, they need this suitcase and... and uh, uh, what do we call them? Uh, cabaret singers. Oh, they need this stuff, right? And so this program I'm developing, we're filming it in August and uh, should be out before Christmas. 
<clears throat> my producer said, yeah, look, we get it out before Christmas. It's a good time to release something. Yes. Uh, but anyway, That's fantastic. Um, Congratulations on everything that. Everything, I'm covering everything that you don't realize I'm doing while right. I'm performing. And Me speaking too. of which, I know uh, Jim had told me he downloaded a couple of my videos. Yes, we're going to show those. But what? first, I wanted oh, to I wanted to ask you, what was it like when Marcel Marceau said to you that Goldston is creating oh. the first generation of American mimes? That's quite a statement. It was. It was. And it took me a while to, I mean, I got it like, holy moly. You know, <laughs> yes. but then I, what, you know, genera generationally, mm -hmm. it wasn't like I was the first mime to hit America. Right. So I had to really think this one out because, you know, I studied in America under a couple of mimes in his generation. Okay. And I finally realized what he was saying to the press. And he said this after the first summer uh, teaching at, at our summer, uh, the Goldson and Johnson School for Mimes. I later renamed it uh, because uh, Nicholas Johnson, my best friend still, uh, the two of us, uh, he was the first. I chose him to be my teaching partner. And after 10 years, I changed the name. I said, everyone's celebration. This is our school, not mine, you know? Anyway. But I realized what he was saying, which is still hard for me to believe, okay, is that all the mimes prior to the ones Nick and I were making were like French, for lack of better terms. But our kids looked uniquely different like American is what he was saying. This, this is a new school of mine, right? So that was very, very you know, it's cool. funny when you're, when you're, I, I'm not sure who is out there, but I'm sure most of you are creative people and yet it, it's healthy to doubt yourself to a certain degree past that degree, it's not healthy at all. You, you, it, it pays to have confidence, but you don't get confidence by yourself. And this That's I learned great. through experience. That's so true. <clears throat> Audience, uh, once I got a three, a three minute, 28 second standing ovation. Okay. And That's I know that. from your mother. <laughs> <laughs> You're hard competition, sir. <laughs> But the show was recorded. I said, that was long. So I went and looked at the foot counter. But anyway, um, but even that didn't give, still, I doubted. But then Marcel would say something to me or, or someone I respected, you know? So when somebody you respect, and I'm talking to you folks, don't go, oh, no, 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 like I used to do. Oh, no. Hear it. Yes, because the people you respect are trying to give you the confidence that you deserve, and maybe that you know already. Right, that that you have, you just won't admit it. Do you find a lot of people that you teach, maybe their confidence wasn't a hundred percent, but by the time they go through the actual programs, yeah. their confidence is boosted exponentially. Yeah. My, my, I have a friend, Victoria Labom, uh, like a sister to me. And uh, she's uh, studied some mine, but she was actor, like Borrow Group and, and uh, long story. But she now is public speaker, sometimes like playing for 3,000 people in a stadium, okay? Mm, yeah. Because she's out there using this stuff. Doing it, yeah. That all the blue coats with the blue ties just stand still. Yeah, and right? they're captivated by it, right? They watch her move around and act out, you know, just yeah. what I was talking about, physically right. speaking. And uh, she went up the charts fast. 
But she says this because she does a lot of coaching. She goes, you know, Greg, I realize when I'm coaching, it's a two-part job. Part is coaching and the other part is being their therapist. Yes. Right? Yeah, you, Jim, there's a smile of, of yes. you get it. Because yeah, ho hosting and being an on-air personality is a similar sort of thing, and as well a bartender and a hairdresser, because a lot of a lot of people tell their lives to the bartender yeah. and to the hairdresser as well. Yes, yeah. But, but when in in our situation, if you see somebody is gifted, you you often have to help them gain the confidence so they yes. will go out you know show it not look shy on stage etc exactly we want to uh we have some extraordinary don't go anywhere folks we have some amazing things to show you here of greg actually uh, on stage doing his thing in an extraordinary way and we're so honored to be able to show this to you uh, the first one is the chair. Tell us about the chair. This is the two of you. When you see the, I wrote the chair and uh, I, when I teach, when I'm actually teaching people to be mimes or as Jim said in the intro, uh, I also will do straight comedy classes about what's funny. I don't call it physical comedy because that means, typically that means in the business, uh, you're doing trips and rolls and, but I just mean, <clears throat> so I have, I don't know where I come up with this. Okay. You guys, you know, it's, it's like Einstein in the bathtub, you know, it's like all of a sudden I realized that if I sneeze, oh, it was an improv. I gave my class so there like five of them. If I sneeze, I can make this person go like this all right here's here it is <laughs> right and that was the beginning of this play and i call these plays they're sort of like plotless okay because they're built on something so it's not a real story like guy goes to the bank robs a bank goes and you know to jail um and so this first play I love because actually when I wrote it, we were at a workshop and we, we made a draft. We showed it to the teacher of the workshop we were in and all the students. And they all looked at me and Bartek and said, oh, you can't do that in the show. <laughs> we're like, really? And then we did it, and we got the biggest yeah, applause that night. You got the you know? biggest applause. See, sometimes you just never know, right? Yeah. But, um, and that's what I love to chase, is what what yeah. hasn't been done or what's not expected. So this is that. I hope that's a yeah. good intro. It's a great uh, intro. His yeah. name is uh, Bart. It's Polish. Yeah. And I tried to pronounce it correctly. Bartłomy. Nickname would be Bartek. Bartłomy Astapchuk, okay, Warsaw, Poland. He and I ran a summer institute over there for many years, um, which is how we developed this play. This is this is several years later, so this is quite good. This, this is notice, amazing, folks. If yeah. I may say, yeah. when I showed you the musicality, when I came in as Good Dog to the Cafe, watch how much this is not funny because of this it's funny about our thought process exactly and for you comedians it's my favorite line i invented it because i teach it yeah people think it's the action that's funny okay this is quick you don't have to zoom. oh we love it okay people think what's funny is me tripping okay so here's the bad, this is not correct. See, nothing funny. That's the action. I bump my head. Not funny. That's the action. I burn my hand, you, you name it, okay? What's funny, it's not the action, it is the reaction. You know, it's hard for me even when I have to put my glasses down. 
okay? Trip, reaction. Okay? All right. Here's, here's a trip where the character hides his reaction because he's in public. This is my favorite. Right? That did anybody notice? Same with the head. Oh, yeah, that's enough. That's so true. And they said that people do that when they trip on something like that, especially if they're in public, they'll either do that uh, <laughs> nonchalant, like, oh, nothing happened. Or they'll, yeah. always, they'll always turn around and look down to see if there's a hole there, a pothole, yes. and there's nothing there. Yes. <laughs> they just tripped. And then if you have, for some reason, if you have a banana peel involved, then all of a sudden it becomes hysterical. <laughs> right? It's so well, true. Great the old, analysis, Jim. The old banana, banana peel. Um, yeah. we're gonna, you're you're going to love this, folks. Again, our very special guest is world-renowned mime. He studied with the incomparable Marcel Marceau. We're talking about mime and teacher Greg Goldston coming to us live from New York City on the Gym Master Show Live. If you want to comment, you can certainly do that. He's so well known and people love him so much. He's got sirens going off celebrating him <laughs> in yep. New York City. Coming to get me cool. out. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm glad you don't live next door to, you know, because you would need I, CBS Sunday morning. If you get a chance to see it, I think it's on YouTube as well. They did an actual piece uh, this past Sunday on white noise. Sleeping uh, with the fan sounds, sleeping with the ocean, sleeping with air conditioning, and especially people who live near uh, a hospital or there's garbage trucks or farm equipment, whatever it is where there's lots of noise around them where they're sleeping, they'll use some sort of a white noise to take their mind away from it, and it sort of puts them out, and it actually can keep them sleeping deeper, longer without having to be distracted by the sounds. Sometimes I use a little white noise. I'll use a little fan or I love when I'm yeah. in a hotel and we have that, that light hum of the air conditioner. That'll put me right out and keep me, you know, really, really uh, nice oh. and calm. And Just a lot that. of hotels now have those little white noise uh, things like part of the clock or next to a clock where you could get ocean or, you know, different. Absolutely. So. Yes, absolutely. And our, our viewers are commenting from around the world. Edward V says so true about physicalizing your lines. Great interview, Thank Jim you, and Greg. Welcome, Ed. And uh, this is really Maureen in Arizona saying mime is such an art, but now I'm seeing it uh, that it's also a science. This is absolutely fascinating a lot Great of comments point. coming in from our lovely viewers and we appreciate everybody doing that here is the chair take a look folks we've got a couple of great things to show you here's one of them our very special guest greg goldston don't touch that dial don't leave your chair because here is the chair
That was a, simply amazing. <laughs> Absolutely love that. Thank you. <laughs> How long did it take to actually design that? And don't go anywhere, folks. We have something else to show you that's a special treat with our special guest, world renowned mime and teacher extraordinaire, Greg Goldstein, coming to us from his studio in New York City on the Gym Master Show Live exclusively. How long did it take to assemble that and put that all together? It's uh, it's brilliant. And our viewers around the world have been commenting uh, with their brilliant comments as well. And we thank them. It, you know, when I saw the title and I saw it was 2008, I thought, holy moly. Um, and I... Folks, I'm not sure, but I will check on YouTube slash Goldmine. That's where he got this. Um, I have later views where you could see how much further we developed it. Okay, because we did it. We'd only do it once a summer, right? Because he's in Poland. But what? And he wanted so to watch this episode, but he's in bed sleeping, right? Oh, Yes. 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 He's in bed sleeping he me from Warsaw and said, good luck on the gym. On the gym show. Show. And he, so he's going to be watching this in the archives. So we say hello to him in Poland and Warsaw. He's sleeping right now while we're doing the show, but yeah, we hope you enjoy it when you watch it in the archives. <laughs> How yeah, cool is that? I, I will make sure folks, uh, cause there's many, many videos. And also because I toured with Marcel, I have very special photographs that nobody else has. Well, maybe somebody else does, but because I was in the wings during the show. Yes. So I started bringing my camera and shooting him from every angle. Another night I'd go to a different position. And here's the beauty of why Marceau. Thank you, Austin. Here's something I, I haven't said, but the reason I look large is not that I lean forward. And I learned this from Marcel. And when I say I have to have these two terms, what he taught me, if I say he taught, he physically taught me or literally. And when I say learn, I meant that I just learned something that he doesn't teach. Okay. So look, most people think you look stronger by leaning towards them. Dig this. This is the Marceau, I call it. When I go away, I actually project further than this. You see? Same with the gesture. I say, give me your strongest gesture. And my students will go, <laughs> and I'll go, yeah, not afraid. Why? It's like the mafia thing. Hey. Right? A. Smaller often is more powerful. Okay? And uh, so, Marceau, you think when you see Marceau, one of his, like at the beginning of a play, he'll be like this. And you'll think he's vertical. But from the side, and here's why I look the way I do, because I got to see him from all angles, which he hides from the front, because from the front, you think he's like this? He's not. He's just like this. See the difference? I'm way out in a 3,000 seat house by not being straight. Same as what I described earlier. I'm flat. So uh, blah, blah, blah on that, but. That is fantastic. I, I think if I could, people if are I learning could, a lot today too on as much as we're entertaining them. Yeah. This is well, you know, this is, it's interesting if, if people hear what they don't think, like somebody, uh, I forget the name, but she, she wrote, I knew mine was an art, but now I realize it's a science. That's that, Maureen. Yeah. Maureen. That's what I was thinking. Um, <clears throat> that's what I said to Jim, uh, prior to us, I go, you know, I want to, uh, show them things. So they see what I, I say, hiding within the art, because 
you don't even realize I am doing what I am doing. I, I call it in a positive way. People don't like this word always that it's malicious. It means you have no idea. Well, I'll sit in your lap. Okay. Watch. And this is technical. Meaning you could learn this. My, my friend Haruka, we spoke about, I say, she goes, I love when you say it's just a technique because it means I could learn it. It's not magic. Okay. But anyway, I am going to create the effect that I, that I'm sitting in your lap. Okay. You see, because I created subliminally the act of you go up before you sit. And so the audience will read it like that. Here's the other one is uh, kiss my neck. So I just sort of stretched and angled, making my neck very pronounced. <clears throat> and the reason, here's your science. The reason I do that is not about my neck at all. It's that by doing this, it's like when Spielberg comes in on a tight one to the faith, the thought. Mm. But if I could, I say just a couple things. I was going to say, I'm so glad you decided to use the chair that has wheels on it tonight. <laughs> I, I purposely do. In fact, I tell my clients if they do video, I go get a chair so you can swivel and roll and move and yeah. Yeah. What are you, you uh, get, get one, Jim? It'll change your show. Absolutely right. Yeah, this one doesn't even, have wheels. This swivels, the, but no wheels on this one. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes that helps. The swiveling. I've really learned helps. the weirdest, and this is science. Uh, I usually call it a physics, which is science. Yeah. yeah. If I pull away, you will lean in. They will lean in because they're like, "Where are you going? Where are you going? Come so on!" So even even if I just do this, yeah, come back. You'll want to come to me. Yes, <laughs> it's psycho. It's I interesting because everybody always says the opposite: say, lean in, right? Right. But, but and there's times to do that, but sure. pulling back a little bit makes people want some more, and it, it's intriguing. It's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's sultry in a way sometimes too. It's uh, it's a little bit of a, of a tease in a way. It's it's really extraordinary when you think about it that way. You know, there's somebody I was. I know you wanted to share a couple more things, and absolutely. I was thinking about this, where in all of this, from your perspective, another legend, um, does this person place in all of this? The great Harpo Marx. Um, Har Harpo was a born comedian and his, his silent work, you know, was stunning. I mean, you asked me, so I have to be objective, which is the way me, Marceau and I would say critical. He said to me once, he goes, if we're not objective, we should not be in this art form, you know, to speak about you, our you got students it, right? objectively. Exactly. So, yes. So he's very well known by having no words, but he, he's not a chaplain. Right. Because he, and this is, Pretty much I've been saying this all night. It's about to be all night. Um, is he shows the actions. He was funny how he played with props, less about his train of thought. Right. And the heart <laughs> and the whole thing. Yeah. <clears throat> and this is what we think of when we think of Chaplin. Oh, I the poor guy. And he's yeah. doing that because yeah. he's going. And running that nonverbal sentence. Right? It's the thought that's funny. Kids, kids after my school assembly, they come to me, they go, You make such funny faces. And I say, They're not funny faces, they're funny thoughts, because that's the truth. Speaking of kids, you did something with, and I mentioned earlier, and we've got more to show you folks, so don't go anywhere. Uh, 
you work with, and I know through my many years on public television here in America on PBS, Sesame Street. Yeah. How, how did that uh, come to pass? Um, there was a, I, I think still is, Bill Irwin uh, created a guy named Mr. I think it's Mr. Doodles. And uh, he didn't say anything. And I knew Sesame liked it. And I had this idea, because uh, my style is different than Bill's. So I had a very close friend who's very famous. I, I said, would you recommend me to them? And he did. And I said, thanks. I, I, won't, I can't say his name, OK? He might be upset. Uh, he, uh, I go, that's so great that you did that for me. I, I, I mean, I just, he goes, I've never done it for anyone ever, Greg. And I went, oh. But anyway, uh, that was Sesame. And uh, it was a great to be on there. And they helped create the play because, you know, their alphabet thing. So the yes. inserts of a real violin or kite, they animated after I performed at green screen. Oh, they did? Yep. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it was a co-collaboration with one of the director uh, heads at Sesame. That's so But I cool. want to say just this one thing, because you asked about the length of time. Uh, yes. New chair. And I just want to point out, because I forgot how much he and I, mostly me, because I was writing it, uh, had to figure out. And, and this is, hold on. Oh, Eric, thank you. I'm, from, I'm born in Covina, California. Uh, that's near where he is. OK, so dig. I realized which you know by watching it, we had to animate things, but more than more than you would think. And the first thing was, imagine this is Bartek's leg. Even though, there we go, <laughs> Spielberg. Um, you notice how my hand did this? See this shape? We, I had to figure this out because when I when we first wrote it, I did this. And this is somehow sexual or flirtatious. Not even if it's a boy or girl, two boys or but just this says too much. This is funny. It's animated. And this is why this. And there's one time where we're like this that we actually, when Bartek took my hand, I think his hand, and he does this move and drew a square. And we realized that's funny. This isn't, you know, the little tiny things. And as far as the speed of that fight, we're actually not going, and this is true, and we had to teach ourselves this, we're not going as fast as it looks. I mean, it psychologically looks faster because we start that whole scene so slowly. So when we get up, had we started it this fast, that final scene, we, we couldn't go as fast as that. You have to equate it like a car gaining speed, for example. Again, it's a physics. But many things like that. Uh, go into the play because that animated character, if you will, not animated like uh, too much. Yeah. I, the one thing about mime I haven't said and wanted to, so I'll, this will be, I'll try to not uh, keep talking like Marceau. Um, As a mime, our audience is shocked you're talking at all. That's what they I said. Know. They said, Jim, what's on? What's this going to be like? They're, they're, they were tuning in so excited to see if is it just going to be. <laughs> I know. And, and I know this for a fact. I'm more interesting when I'm not talking. OK, <laughs> but I can't tell you these secrets without it. And uh, now, of course, I forgot what I was about to say. 
It'll come back to you. Well, what we were could. We it we was would... just what I was talking about the chair. You were talking oh, about animation. Animation, right? And that this wasn't this. Oh, like, oh, wasn't, right? In mime. And here's right. here's something about mime that a lot of the new mimes don't get. And and it's not that they're not smart. It's that they yeah. don't have teachers. They can't. Right. Very, I'm the last of the Mohicans almost, know. you know? Yeah. Yeah. They, they will call me from India and say, you know, can you come? And, you know, we have no teachers. Two, two, a married couple flew in in January from Buenos Aires just to have private classes here at my house. They're like, we don't have a teacher. So anyway, dig. What I do, and even in that chair play, as animated as it is, you believe that this really could have happened. Yes. You know, that's crazy. And that's the point of a mind. We're not trying to be a cartoon no. or like clown. Right. Clown is a different art. They, it's a they, different art, right. It's just a different uh, art form. So, but we, as no matter what I do, I can't get away with this. Imagine, okay, I'm at a really stuck big time on purpose, okay? I showed you the trip before, right? As stylized as I am, I make it look natural. That's what I mean about hiding. Marceau was the master at that. You couldn't tell how. Okay, anyway, imagine I did this, right? You already hate me two steps in. You're like, oh, he's going to try to be funny, okay? So we work on that train of thought or that premise. Is that has to be believable. It has to be believable, exactly. Yeah. A great example is uh, Steve Martin and John Candy yeah. in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Oh, yes. Right? As yes. big as, as, as when Steve Martin's throwing his uh, suitcases and coats because his car that he rented isn't there, or you believe it. It's not too much, which is why I keep saying how uh, simplistic mine looks or subtle. Subtle, yes. Yes. Subtle. I, I, I think it really draws you in, and uh, it's not one of those arts and sciences that um, – you actually don't want to be distracted. You don't want it to be too flamboyant or loud and with the smoke and mirrors and the fireworks and the disco ball and all of that. You want it to be subtle and soft and to make you think and make you feel like you're a part of it. Like this is being ah. done for you. Yeah. And you're, is... you're, you're in on it. Yeah. That's so perceptive, Jim. Uh, one of the first things I learned when I took professional classes with Richmond Shepherd in LA is uh, he said, first thing you need to know is that mime is a universal art form. And we're like, huh? What, 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 in what frame do you, he goes, the plays you choose to do have to be things they would do. He said, once I was asked to do a, a show for a golf tournament or some big award dinner, I don't know. He goes, so I did a play about golfing and everything going wrong. He goes, but I could only do that play there. If I do that play <laughs> in a normal theater, people won't know what a slice is or what a hook is or what, a, you know, you have to be a golfer. So he was teaching us. That's not universal. So this play on the chair, you know, you don't know why they both want the middle chair, but we make you think it's important to us. And therefore, it, as you said, Jim, uh, it becomes important to you, right? 
comedy works that way too. Some of the yes. greatest comedy is comedy that we can relate to. Why why shows like I Love Lucy and these others where yes. these are everyday situate the Dick Van Dyke show, everyday situations that happen, relationships, the dishwasher doesn't work, you stub your toe, things that happen to all of us that are presented in a comedic way through the facial reactions and the verbal reactions, the situations they get themselves in and hopefully out of that we can't, and maybe it's a little bit more dramatic than what happens to us, but it reminds us of, of life and living and the things that we go through. And, and in comedy, um, I, I love comedy that is reflective and observant of, of life. One of my favorite, and I've mentioned this before, uh, one of my favorite, there's, I have a lot of great favorite movies, I guess, but yeah. one of mine in the comedic sense is the out of towners with Jack Lemon and Sandy Dennis, the 1969 oh, yes. version, because Thank everything you. that happened to them as dramatic and crazy as it is all one thing after the next that goes wrong, goes wrong as he's coming. George Kellerman is coming from Ohio, Twin Oaks, Ohio to the big city for that job interview and all the things that happen and go wrong. And I encourage people to see the movie. Neil Simon, of course, wrote mm -hmm. it. The music with Quincy Jones. This whole time period of late 60s, early 70s in New York. And, and the comparable Jack Lemmon and Sandy Danis. Oh, and God. Ann Mira makes an appearance in it as well. Um, just something about the way Jack Lemmon could always capture the everyman, the plight of... <laughs> Just surviving life, your luggage lost in the airport, and all. I absolutely love that reflection on us done in an observant, witty, dry, comedic way. It's very that you're so smart. It makes sense why you have this show that's so popular because you're just so intelligent. Uh, you know, what? my father has always said, and I'll say this with you as well. The audience has heard this. <laughs> my father has always given us phenomenal keystone advice. And when I was seven years old, he said this too. Now he's an adult talking to a seven-year-old. And he said, and it still holds true today. Jim, whenever anybody says something kind or nice to you, ask them to please put it in writing and address it management. <laughs> that's good that's good <laughs> um we have yeah. another yeah is you know that comic the uh, about you talking about the comedy you love there's another uh one word uh one sentence it's oh i've been there right when the audience <laughs> can say i've been there i've right? been there that's, that's, that's right what we're heading for I, I went through that too. Exactly right. Yeah. I think it's, mm -hmm. abs yeah, it's absolutely uh, amazing. And our viewers who are watching around the world, the love is commenting. We appreciate that as well. We've got another. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. This is loves me not. Tell us about this one, Greg. Um, With a little Chopin. Sometimes, in there well. No, uh, sometimes a song will trigger me to write something like I'll, I'll see the story when I hear a certain song. And this was that. Um, it's wonderful. It's a, uh, I'm happy to hear that. It's a play I didn't do very many times because I thought it was well, <clears throat> but I, I just want to say this is a lyrical play. Okay. It's not like the chair at all. This is, let's say uh, I've learned that it's important when you do a two hour show to have variety in, in the type of theme. So this is a, a, a lyrical play. Okay. There we go. <laughs> that was full circle. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to, there you go. Don't expect the chairs. What I'm trying to That's say. it. Not love me not, not loves me not. Nothing can follow the chair. <laughs> nothing can follow the chair. Don't touch that dial and don't leave your chair because here comes loves me not.
That's really beautiful. Very touching. Very beautiful. When you see these back, what runs through your veins as you're watching them? I I really haven't seen it in a decade, and I forgot. This is not bad. <laughs> <laughs> World-renowned mime says, hey, it's not bad. Maybe I should stick with this as a career. I'll give it yes, another thought. Yes. I'll let you know in the morning, Jim. <laughs> I should do this for a living. <laughs> you should do this for a living. I think you have a future in this. <laughs> that is really. Now, tell us about what it's like putting that together. I mean, that's more of your artistry and action there. What What is it like? Is It's got to be intense to put something like that together it's so touching and and beautiful i i think best i tell you this about me uh it explains more um <clears throat> when i first started my career which was basically uh 1979 80 okay um i had a, a year 15 years even where i had a bad rep by artistic people, they'd say, Goldston, he's just a funny guy. Because I was such a natural comedian, most of my show was funny. And there was a point where I said, dang, I have to write something that's not funny. You know, that's a build up the side of my repertoire that were, um, you know, so I had, uh, what did they call it, breadth. I had range. Mm -hmm. And this is why I wrote this play. I said, I need, to in fact, that I, I have, yeah. Yeah, I tell you. <laughs> so this hat play, which you could see. And you are line, funny. <laughs> yeah. I would always start my show with the hat play because it's not, it shows not only it's funny with timing and the situation. I put the hat on and it, and it, it gets stuck or when I finally get it on, it makes my hand go crazy or later my head stay in place. Okay. It's really, it's like the chair in style of just funny without real story um, battle between me and hat. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. But I would always do that. And, and I was telling Jim, there was a festival. The largest mime festival was in Warsaw, Poland because Warsaw, until the last president came in, had the best art funding of any country ever, I would think. Okay, I might be wrong, but money like crazy. So this festival that started out as a three day festival in 1980 grew to, was it 1980 or 19, 1990? Um, <clears throat> it grew to be a 10, a 10 day festival with some so, uh, weekends, two shows, you know, different shows, one outdoor and one in the theater, okay? So I was there like 17 years. So they knew me, they knew me well. And 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 uh, we had a rep, us Americans, they go, we can't wait for the Americans because they're just so gosh darn funny. You know, in Poland, yeah. it's all about, you know, more. Uh, the Russians are in, the Germans right. killed us all. And, you know, we're somber I, and yeah. Oh, just fucking tragic, excuse me, really tragic. There, there Can you was be more one, specific? <laughs> there was one more, there was one night after years, it was a Polish company, and here it comes again, the sound of an air raid siren, and I just said, if I hear one more air raid siren, you know, it's the Germans coming to bomb them. I'm just going to get up and walk out. I just, every, every festival I hear, air, air, okay, I made my point. Is that so where that, the sirens have stopped where you are now? When we were showing those videos, did you go across the street and say, I'm on the air, stop the sirens? Because I they've stopped. I, I don't know. Maybe because it's late. That's it. Their, their ambulance is going to a very big uh, uh, hospital. That's what I, you said, I, Yes. Um, but I'll tell you what I did do. Okay, everybody. I was telling Jim, I don't know if I said it here, but above me, I, I live in a Spanish and black neighborhood. It's the greatest neighborhood. I mean, 
everyone's friendly. A lot of culture, yeah. Everywhere else I've lived, nobody says hello in the hallway. People will say hello to me when I'm grocery shopping. I'm like, I don't even know this person. They must be in my building. It's just this kind of a community. Dominican Republic, very yes. family. Sure. Anyway. Yes. So above me, I've been here five years. Above me, two years ago, moved in a couple, and they play Spanish music. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah I don't totally mind good. Spanish music, but they play it so loud. Yeah. That my light bulbs would shake. shake from the base. And I had to go up there twice. Second time, the guy goes, well, it's my house. I go, okay, I know. But do you, do you say it shaking. or do you do it in mime and with finger gestures? <laughs> I use my physically speaking character so they know they I'm serious, right? I don't walk up like Chaplin. Right. Anyway, yeah. so I asked the guy, uh, the story's too long already. No, uh, it's good. The, I, I say to the guy, because I could hear the speaker, you know, talking here, and I could hear the speaker in there so loud. And I go, sir, see, I did mine. I made the sir show up, right? I go, are your speakers on the floor? And he goes, Oh, sorry. <laughs> and after that, he put them up on tables, you know? But <laughs> they still do it so loud. So we're going on uh, Eastern time at eight o'clock. And from six, they're playing it so loud, I'm thinking, I'm so screwed. Because mm -hmm. we're not going to have. It, it would be so loud that you would be hearing it through all the conversation. And I'm in a panic. I'm, oh, thank you. Whoever said that? Oh, my God. Oh, thanks. I, I, I'm going to. These are our viewers. Mind. Yes, these are. This is what the Gym Masters show wow. vibe is like. It's uh, we don't call these interviews. We call these conversations like Dick Cavett, Johnny Carson. Anyway, yeah. so, so I I take out, they don't, they know me, but they don't know what I do. So I took out my business card, which is the photo that you said you liked, you know, and, yes. and a $20 bill. And I go up, yeah, this one. And I, and I, 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 I was thinking they might not answer the door. So through the people, I'm, the $20 bills in front of, and I say, listen, Here's who I am. I know you don't. And I have at eight o'clock <clears throat> a video interview of a very important program plays all around the world. Could you just turn it really low or off at eight o'clock? Because I imagine in, in, in your archive forever, you hear like, What's that Spanish music. You think the sirens are bad. And then plus, depending on what they're playing, the whole show would have that in the background, which would throw off the co that copyright thing. Too. They, they, yeah. I play a video game with my friend with headphones, and he could hear it through the headphones, so I knew. Yeah. And I said, "Look, I'm in a. I know. And here's twenty dollars for the favor." And she wouldn't take the twenty, she, and, and it's off. You see, her? it's quiet. That's why you hear a siren. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, look at oh, this. this is my favorite picture. Yeah. Of all the pictures I have with him, and I have like 300. Wow. I I was introducing him for a lecture demonstration. That's why we're both in street clothes. And uh, Marcel Marceau. That yeah. look in his eye, uh, this cap, cap, in, this, encapsulates this says everything. <laughs> Thank you. Encapsulate. Yeah. I you think, think it, you're the I, mime, I've, I've and I many. will say it, I'm the broadcaster. <laughs> See, we got a nice little thing here. <laughs> this shows, I, I'm not used to saying this many words in an hour. I bet two. you're amazing at charades. You probably win all the time. Oh, yeah. It sounds like. <laughs> That's very true. But this is, he used to, you know what he used to say to me? Uh, this was a few years into our relationship. He would say, Greg, don't you realize I'm your older brother? Mm. Uh, that's, that's, Isn't we that were not? like that. In fact, company members, be, his company members became sort of jealous of me or envious.
because mm -hmm. I didn't go to the French school and I was so close with him and blah, blah, blah. But that's another story and very few, not, not like everybody. Sorry. But we were somehow, you know, they say, and I'm not into astrology for any serious way, but I do know somebody told me that Virgo, I'm a Virgo. Huh, I'm a Libra, balance and harmony with Virgo rising. Yeah. yeah, I'm. So you like things in a certain order? Are you? Uh, What's that, after are you, Virgo? Are you, is that Lib Leo? Libra. Libra. Virgo. Okay, so, so I'm Virgo Libra. I'm on the cusp too. Yes. Lib Libra is very happy and loves everything, right? Charismatic. Uh, <laughs> we, so we crave I, balance and harmony. Balance and harmony. And Virgos are very critical. So when I'm in my Libra mood, I love everybody. And the next day I'm like, I hate them all. Yes. Virgos can be a little on the perfectionistic side, liking order and right. Yeah. <laughs> I hate them all. <laughs> I think it's a big part of why my work is so perfectionist. Also, you know, I have my whole, all the Goldstones, we have very high mechanical reasoning. That's why they were in construction. And I was an A student in drafting and all that in high school only. I only went to that far and then fell into mine. See, eyes. It's all about eyes. How does one fall into mime? I like that. <laughs> I yeah. fell into mime. <laughs> it's a because it's a deep pull. <laughs> <laughs> Was there also the pursuit of being a comedian as well in on the radar because I, of I, your automatic comedian if if i had could write verbal material i would love to do it in fact one of my stand-ups uh, has been coaching uh, coming over for about two years now not every single week or month even but he last time he was here because i'll get up and show them how to play it you know and not knowing all this but he, he just walked back to the chair and he goes, I just can't stand it that you could do my material better than me. <laughs> <laughs> what a compliment. Which was a compliment, you know? Wow, absolutely. But uh, it's about, everything's about timing. And I look at, I, uh, I compare everything to music. In fact, Jeff Beck, who just passed away, unfortunately. Yes, yes. I, after Marcel passed away, I used to call Jeff Beck my last living teacher. Mm -hmm. Because, not because he teaches me how to play guitar, although there is a Jeff Beck copy behind that curtain, a Stratocaster. <coughs> I'll never play it like him, but at least I have the axe. But anyway, where I'm going with this is I will put on certain songs and act them out. In fact, certain songs that um, uh, certain songs I have plays like the umbrella has a has a song behind it, and I will rehearse the umbrella to other songs. And it's not singing in the rain. <laughs> Raindrops keep falling on my head. <laughs> I can't think of something funnier than what you're saying, so I'm just silent. You just roll but with it. Here's what I do. Here's, here's <laughs> how I improve my acting. Watch. Can you hear that? Yeah, we do. I love it. Okay. Watch.
that I hear when I hear music, I hear conversations. And that's what you see in, well, even if I'm improvisation, but this is one of my rehearsal tools. That's so when I get back up there, yeah, <clears throat> you know, remember at the beginning of the show, I said, it's a nonverbal grammar. I call it a four beat sentence structure, meaning, hey, what the huh? Right. Oh. right. Right. So a sentence that has a resolve, like that... meaning a period. Right. So, um, so that's what I'm practicing when I'm going at that speed, even though I wouldn't go that fast yeah. on stage, but it's an exercise uh, process. You know what it reminded me of a little bit uh, of somebody who, again, Jerry Lewis, exactly, and then you tie into France because France absolutely embraced Jerry Lewis, the typewriter France. sketch. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that was pretty brilliant, huh? There, there is a uh, a play. I, uh, you folks. If you get to my YouTube page, there's a play called The Argument. And I'm three people. I am a violinist who is an egotist. And I flip. And mime, it's great. This is why solo mime, I can play four or five people in a play. So you're not only watching a one-character play. We call it multi-character plays. But then there's a pianist who he's yelling at. Uh, meaning him to him. And then there's the bass, who's sort of like the judge. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this is a takeoff in a way of a play from Marceau called The Trial. Yes. Where he has a judge and a prosecutor and a, the guy who's the defender. But it's it would take off of, of the concept. But anyway, Jerry Lewis, and it's on the net out there somewhere, I forget what movie it's from, but he sits, he's like a janitor or something, and he comes in where there's a big boardroom. This isn't the one, uh, but the song comes on and he starts acting like he's the executive. I don't, I think he has, yes, a, right? right? And then he goes, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and me, we're finished, da da. Right. Yes. And and that is what inspired me to do find something which turned out to be the argument where I where first the guys do on the violin and then that turns into the I, I uh, we could say transform the violin into me my words just like this guy is pretty soon you know i'm back to the piano it's a beauty of the invisible world right absolutely yes but yeah you that's why i knew when you started the sentence you were going to say jerry lewis because there's several movies where he will mime to a song like like this clip i can't tell where that clip's from but I, this is it this is it yes that's it. yeah yeah Dun, 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 and the music's yeah, fantastic yeah. to it as well. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's the Errand Boy, 1961. Oh, that's what it is. Great. Yeah. I'm going to write that down. The Errand Boy, 1961. Yeah. And it's on. Uh, probably all it's the. It's on YouTube. Probably. You know uh, some Jerry of those Lewis nostalgic uh, movie networks, too. And they'll have Jerry Lewis marathons uh -huh. and. All kinds of things like that. At the um, beginning of uh, the Nutty Professor, yes, Jerry does the best example of what he was great at is the double take. And, yes, uh, right. Yes, and he, he comes in. The principal wants him because he he's science teacher blew up the laboratory or something. And as he sits, I'm gonna change the angle for this camera. You watch him go. And he could, he does this for like two minutes, just looking back. And the other day, because I still study this stuff, I realized that why it's funny. I first used to think it was 
how he looked and turned his head. But when you watch it, what, what he does when he's looking away is this nonverbal process. It's like the, remember, action, reaction. As he looks, you see him trying to brainstorm of maybe he shouldn't say anything, maybe he should. And he goes through this little thing before he looks back. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. I talk too much. There's one thing my friends don't get, okay? I mean, Haruka gets it. I watch a lot of films, okay? And everybody thinks I'm just a film lover and I just sit around and watch. I, I watch films because I learn acting from them. I watch Korean films and People used to flip, but what took the Academy Awards? Korean film. Um, and I don't mean the horror Korean films. That they don't, those don't turn me on at all. Uh, like Freddy Krueger, get out of my house, you know. Um, but they, the Japanese women, there's one where she's crying in front of her boyfriend about something he hasn't done or, or why does he do this? I, I forget. But she starts crying, okay? And we're laughing at her. And I'm thinking, where do they study that they learn how to cry and make us laugh? Mm -hmm. Brilliant. It really is. Why do you love and, doing this so much, Greg? Uh, this is in I, your blood. You've been doing it for so long. What is it about it that feeds your soul to want to not only continue doing it, live it, but also pay it forward and teach others how they can do it and learn about it and appreciate it too? Well, on the me part, well, the teaching it is that I'm doing it by teaching. And it's a different thing when you're teaching an art yeah. Yes. than when you're performing an art, okay? Yes. Now I'm on the number two side of, and, and here's what people ask me often. Greg, few people perform and teach. Most do one or the other. You do right. both. What, what do you love the most? And I had to think. And I said, well, listen, it's not like I don't love performing. There's nothing like being on a stage and having 700 people just break out into laughter, you know, because, which I haven't mentioned when you asked about my childhood, I've always liked making people laugh. And by high school, I remember a mother of one of my high school friends, she'd always look at me and go, you should be on TV. You're just so funny. And I thought, me? You know, funny? I, but I love to make people laugh. So that's always been in my blood. And that's the uh, the performer side of me. But the teacher side, and, and you may know this, Jim, uh, due to your career. In fact, I'm sure you do. There's nothing like when you have a student, whether it's a group or a private coach, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching, where they're having, they can't make a breakthrough. And they even get to the point where like, I'll never be able to do this. And when you hit, when you get them to where they can do it, you'll see them go. And, and that's, that's, there's nothing better than that. And, and sometimes they'll look at you and go, oh my God, I could do, I can't do it. And that's what teaching, you ne I never forget those. Once I was teaching after 9-11, uh, uh, art, uh, <clears throat> what do you call it? An arts organization sent a bunch of us to a part of Brooklyn where all the Irish people lived. It was that, it's a big area where they all settled. And they said, we're sending you there to go to schools to take their mind off these kids off of 9-11 because most of their parents are police and firemen. So we want you to go there and just teach them, don't, don't talk about 9-11, you're the distraction, right? <clears throat> so I think we did a couple of days a week for about six weeks. And the best part of the story, 
is at the end when I was teaching this one classroom how to write plays, you know, short little doodads. Um, two of them at the same time said, could, could I said, so go write your own play now. And they, they turned to me. It felt like everybody at once, like they had pre-discussed this, but they probably didn't. They said, could we do a play about the firemen at 9-11? Mm. And I thought, I'm not supposed, I've been told not to talk about 9-11. And I looked at them all and I said, sure. Because that's what you do when you're a writer. You write about something you want to write about. So I couldn't say no. So when I said, sure, let's break up into small groups. And, and one goes, yeah, because I want to be the, the fireman going up the staircase. And another one said, I want to I wanna be the guy with the dog sniffing for people under the building. The things I said, I'm, I'm like I'm crying inside, these images. And they wanted to go do that. And I said, I think this is why they call the arts healing, you know? But I'll never forget it. And that's that's to the last point about when you teach. It was the point I said I never forgot. They were all leaving after this last class. And a young okay. Young. Okay. I think it was third grade or something. He comes up to me. He was African American. He comes up. He looks up at me, puts out his hand, and he says, this and exactly this. It's engraved in stone. He goes, I will never forget you, man. And he said that exactly, man, I'll never forget you, man. And I know I have never forgotten him. And you sure don't get that from a standing ovation. No, that's no, this is yeah. human contact. That's human what contact. teacher means. It's exactly Teach. right. Exactly right. A lot of blessings and joys in your life that keep you going through all this, right? Too. Yeah, kind of uh, balances out all the tragical difficulty of being a solo mime artist <laughs> or an artist in general. You know, it's not yeah. easy. Yeah. But yeah, no. but no, but I. I wouldn't give it up for the world, which is the question you asked me. I've tried. I tried. Have you tried? This is just too hard. I, you know, I, 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 I'm never going to have a savings account. I'm never going to, you know, IRA. What's that? You know, and this and that. So I tried to give it up. I don't know, for a couple of months. Right. And I get a call from some elementary school around the boroughs. And it was just one teacher says, could you come? Uh, I don't know, let's say it's a second grade class. I, I don't remember. But she said, would you just come in for 45 minutes and do teach them a little bit of mine? And I'm like, sure. I go there. In less than 12 minutes, I'm showing them something. You know, the balloon. Or who knows what? And they're all laughing. And my inner monologue says, you can never quit this. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that feels like what I feel like when I'm doing it. And in fact, uh, this line just a year ago, I made up. <coughs> I said, you know, when I'm on on a stage like like uh, you saw me in Bartek on, or loves me not, and there's 500 people out there or more or less, I realize I have the best seat in the house. Mm -hmm. It's not the front row, it's me because I'm looking around seeing all these You're things. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, Juliet, man, I see her, right? I don't even try anymore. People say, how do you, I go, I don't. I just had the sense memory that 
if I do this, I feel I'm, and all of a sudden an invisible woman shows up, right? Frankenstein, right? See him? You could. <laughs> it took a while. I said to Haruka, on the year I turned 27, okay? I don't know. She had been in about five years by then, let's say. And I said, you know, Haruka, after 27 years, it, it starts to get easy. Because I remember 27 years in, I went, heck, this is starting to get easy. <laughs> but that's why we call it an art, right? That's why it's, it's an art. Right? Somebody, somebody else who knew that very well um, and went to a ripe old age making us laugh and thank mr george burns oh i'm such a fan there he is with a cigar and his hanky my aunt in west hartford connecticut connect collected dolls very very intensely and thousands wow. of dollars worth of dolls and a Look special eyes. special his, room every... in the house yeah a special room in the house and this got passed down to me in the family they said that you know, they're going through different things. Would you like the George Burns doll? And I said, would wow. I like the George Burns doll she collected? Absolutely. And it really is uh, something. You know, he's on a pedestal. He's got his dress shoes, fully clothed. I mean, the whole bit. Uh, he pops on. I did a nostalgic episode three years ago, and he's become part of the... Uh, situation here at the gym master show he pops on he's loved this conversation he absolutely uh was blown away by the artistry of it all he understood and appreciated this uh form of art mime so much but he learned so much so from one legend to the other <laughs> mr george burns how cool is that huh say good night gracie that's it yeah, he's got the cigar. I he say hangs that all the time. They I, all, I do. He, I uh, he, hangs down he hangs down below. He's sort of like our associate producer. He's got a cigar, oh, and he's got a little mar martini down below that he sips on. Oh, how nice. <laughs> this has been such a great time. And all of you. Uh, the I, Lovities, the Gym Master Show Lovities around and, the world. And I'm sure the Lovities. And, and I, the, I want yeah. one question uh, to Jim. When it's posted, yes, it, will I be able to see all these comments? Is there a way that those show up? Sure, yes, yep. Because all I would love to. It's all I don't archived, know. and it'll be all yeah, this I, episode will be archived on our YouTube channel for everybody watching who's watching live. Some are commenting, but there's thousands of people watching right now who are not necessarily in the chat room commenting, but they're watching and following along and they may comment later on our YouTube channel as well oh. underneath the Amis episode, which actually we, we encourage everybody to do that. If you enjoyed this episode, um, we encourage you to give it a like big thumbs up, like, and wow. uh, leave a comment for us that helps this series, the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show series. As uh, people have said, we're bringing back the lost art of conversation. Leave a comment and uh, also subscribe to the YouTube channel. And when you do, make sure you click the notification bell so you never miss out on any of our phenomenal episodes. So you can leave a comment as well. So this will be archived for all to see 24-7 around the world um, on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. And this was absolutely amazing, truly. I'm going to keep the porch light on for you, as I say to all the guests, Greg. You are truly a craftsman, a true artist, uh, a great guy, very funny. We bounced off each other so beautifully. It's as if we've known each other for, for yep. 20 years. And, of I course, we... We love our mutual friend, Ronald Rand, another phenomenal artist mm -hmm. and performer as well. And we, we thank Ronald uh, profusely. And I hope you enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with you. And the show met whatever expectations it had, Greg. I, I have, and I just want to do a shout out to Ronald. Thank you for uh, telling me and, uh, uh, and pitching me to Jim. This has been a time of my life. And the reason for you guys out there, when I saw these little comments, these comments were smart. You know, yeah. most of the time I, I get, you know, who knows, smart doesn't matter. Yeah. but yeah. I looked down at them and I thought, wow, what a, what perception. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to 
Thank Don't you, read everybody. something that went by too fast for me to even catch because we were working. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few, few so of them much. here and Maureen in Arizona. This has been an absolutely fantastic conversation. Greg, your talent is untouchable. Thanks for the entertainment. May your star continue to rise into the stratosphere for years to come. One of our loveties. Uh, we love Maureen and Maureen also did the super chat, which we thank you very much, Maureen, for. That was so kind of you. And uh, Eric Levitt says, it's nice to meet you, Greg. We'll leave the light on for you. That's right. We will leave the light on for you. Merlin in Ontario says, well, this has been a very interesting conversation. Love you, man. Right back hey, at Yeah, right back at you as well. And yes, uh, thanks to everybody for all these great comments coming through. And I'm a very interactive host in my professional word on world of television and radio. And when I started the Gym Master Show Live as an extension of my work on TV and radio, I said, I want interactivity. So I love, cause I love conversation and I love yeah. to learn. And, you know, uh, having done this professionally uh, as a career, uh, one of the things that I do as a career in the industry, um, you know, sometimes there's people out there where they make it all about the, the on-air personality, the hosts, the, ah. the about themselves. So it's just asking questions, asking questions, asking questions. And they don't listen to the answers. They don't feel it. They don't oh. invest in it. So what I do, which because it's naturally who I am. I mean, what you're seeing on the air here is basically the same guy you'll see in the supermarket. You know, maybe we've got the lights on and we've got, you know, the, the set and all this, you know, color around us. But it's basically <clears throat> the same thing just being presented on the air on this, uh, on this show. I look at it like... Yes, I'm the host, the producer, the creator of the whole thing. But I look at like, we're all in this together. So so my chair is not higher than the guest's chair. We're all in this together. I have things to participate. I, you know, I, I did have one person say once in their early years, Jim, why do you talk on the show? You know, just have the guests talk and you just uh. ask a question and just sit there. I said... Number one, it's called the Jim Master Show. <laughs> number two, it's a talk show. And number three, it's a conversation. We're interacting. We're playing off each other. You're saying nuggets and I'm receiving them and connecting my nuggets to yours. And then the viewers the, who are commenting are, are sort of weaving theirs in. And we're all sort of getting a piece of the pie together. And to me as the Libra who loves and craves balance and harmony and creates that for the world. That's, I think the ultimate when we're all getting something. So we're all, when we wrap up this episode, we're like, that was great. <laughs> you know, we all got something from it. We all yep. participated as I well. Did. I yeah. did. This was unexpected experience for me. Thank you, Jim. The pleasure is mine. Spread the word about our show to others. You think might Very like well. to be be a part of the show and uh, we're here in the tri-state area. So hopefully we'll get a chance to get together maybe for lunch or something I and, love uh, it. in the city. That would be awesome. My friend. Okay. I'd love it. You give me a day's notice when you're coming in and I'll plan on it. We'll hop on that Metro North and we'll be there in a New York minute. You're the best, <laughs> Greg. <laughs> you're like, uh, yeah, my wit, my, my, I'm always, my mind is always looking for, the line, the humor, because I'm very observational. Mm -hmm. And I get mm -hmm. that completely from my dad. My dad, uh, uh, English, Irish, grew up in New York City, uh, in Astoria, and just very quick witted and funny and charismatic and, um, you know, bringing in observational humor. You know, you can be on a train and you can put a whole story together. Do you know what she's really saying to him right now? And you create these little plays and stories with people that are just sitting, you know, in a booth across from you. You know what he's really saying to her? And then I'll have friends and family with me. And they'll be like, oh, my God, how did you do that? How did you put that whole play together? You don't even know those people. But you sort of create. You're always thinking and creating. And I like to, um, you know, when appropriate, I like to bring in some humor because I think it's very, uh, it's a, like music and other forms of uh, of art. It's universal. It's a universal language and uh, brings us don't all. Don't they say something like, uh, you may know this sentence better than me, Jim, but it's something like laughter is healing. There's the best medicine. Yes. Yes. That's yes. 
the I best medicine. Like Absolutely, my friend. <laughs> And I love how you, we didn't even need a camera that zoomed in and out because you did your own zooms rolling back and forth. <laughs> Full use of that studio. Yeah. It's, boy, it's so I quiet. I learned it from it's, before me. It's so quiet uh, there now. You don't hear the, that? it's so quiet. You don't hear the I dance know, music. God. You don't hear any, it's quiet. It's nice. Very nice. You'll sleep well tonight, my friend, won't you? I sure will. And I will remember this forever. Oh, well, I, I'm honored by that. And you're welcome back anytime. And uh, there is the website, goldmine.com. Don't you love that? <laughs> That's witty as well. I love it. Um, spread the word about the show. You're welcome back anytime. And thanks for spending all this time. Uh, just a little background here, gang. We chatted before the show because we test audio and test video and get to know each other a little bit before the, you know, the guest and I, uh, so we have a little bit of a, uh, we don't do a two hour chat before we, we do a little few minutes before maybe 10, 15 minutes before the show, make sure everything's okay. And then we go live on the air and that keeps it fresh. If we did a two hour chat beforehand, like Johnny Carson, didn't like to do sometimes he didn't even get a chance to meet his guests he didn't want to talk to his guests before they even came on because he wanted to keep it uh ah. fresh but you <laughs> you had uh you were you mentioned a lot of different things to me and I, I wanted to know what what do you have that's coming up that you're very excited about <clears throat> we can look forward to well for me as i said is this project yes because uh mostly because well like the producer he said greg i took your classes i ran uh uh what i called my mixel they were six week sessions twice a week and a guy he said the reason i want you to do this is because i know how much they need it because I know what it did for me just taking your class for six weeks, how it altered everything I do now or something like that. So for me, it's great because it's not a, you know, it's, it's, if you walk into a hotel, uh, into a restaurant like this, you don't belong there. If you walk in like this, you own the place, right? Like I call it even, I'll leave you with this, gals. I teach a certain shape and it's called coiling. It means I'm going to rotate my ribs this way and my hips that way. Either way works. Okay, watch. <clears> hey, <throat> uh, you got a quarter? Hey, you got a quarter? Right? Empathetic, confident. Right? John Travolta. It's dateable. You walk into a place, girl or boy, like this, everybody's going to say, hey, who's that? So that's what this is all about. Not to mention it makes you a better public speaker or lawyer or whatever stuff. But that's what's coming up. Now, you know, we're filming it, so it's not like uh, it's cool. a show. I can say there's a show yeah. coming up soon. Yeah. Uh, right, stay tuned. You'll keep me posted, and then I can. I sure make, will. I'll be I happy sure to will. Uh, Anything share that's it. live, I'll pitch it directly to you, okay? Things just as you know. Yeah. Since COVID, a lot of stuff where Stopped. we used to go and play closed and are gone or yeah, um, went away. Before we uh, before we go, just a quick thought, quick question here, Greg. Uh, yeah. If I was to ask you what shape you prefer most, would it of these two choices? Would it okay. be a circle or a square?
honestly, for me, square. Me too. I mean, it yeah. seems that this is the right answer, but there's something very dramatic about this. That it has the corners and it has the turning points, and right? Yeah. And I, I only, as soon as you said it, I, th I think of this story, and I don't know if this is why I love it, but I had a very famous teacher. His name was Moni Akim here in New York. Wrote a book called uh, Movement for Actors, a uh, great mind. Went all the way back to DeCruz's first company. Anyway, so I'm studying with him. I didn't get a long time with him, but we're talking once. And, and it was at the time that people were mimes started combining stuff thinking they'd be more famous or popular like mime and clown or mime started juggling or all, all types of stuff you know my money freaking unicycle uh whatever they were so uh so money and i'm asking them about that you know they're sort of going outside the art trying to i don't know be more popular who knows and he looks at me like this brilliant man one of my real mentors he goes look it's like this here's the art of mine he goes if you go outside of this square you're no longer doing mine he goes if you stay within this square this is where you improve the art of mine. Amazing. And that's what I did. People and used yet, to say, you're still doing solo. It should all be about, it should all be company now. And then in Poland, like I told you, uh, 10 shows the, the critic there knew everything because almost every mime company from around the world would play there and she would review. So she said this one year, she goes, and I kind of have it memorized because it was so striking. Goldston is a master of the most, uh, of the highest specialty, the solo mime show. And I went, see, if you stay around long enough, you'll be really good at it. Mm. It was an interesting taking, an interesting look at shapes and the, yeah, the yeah. square versus the and both uh, enjoying the the square. Yet they say yeah. they say all the world's a circle, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's it, Greg. This was really fantastic. Oh, what I was saying earlier, you know, we do a little backstage chat with the guests before they come on, and uh, Greg and I, Greg had asked, you know, how long we'll probably chat. You know, and I said, well, usually, you know, we go about an hour. We can go shorter. You know, I never put a time clock. I don't rush guests through. I don't keep guests chained to their chair as well. If they, you know, if it's flowing and we're having a wonderful conversation and it's just magic is being made live, unscripted, unrehearsed, we let it roll and we go from there. So I said, you know, about an hour, maybe, you know, if it goes a little longer, that's the way it works. Uh, two hours and 31 minutes and 29 seconds, my friend. Not bad. No. Figure. Not bad. Go figure. <laughs> That's it. See? And it was terrific. It didn't feel like it, right? Everybody guess says oh, it doesn't. it sailed. I remember when we were coming up to an hour, you hadn't even shown the videos. And I'm thinking, hey, we better get to those videos. We're that, out of time. <laughs> because of the hour, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's it. Well, this was a pleasure, my friend, once again. And truly hope you enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with you. I did. I did. I wish you big, huge success more than you even have now. I appreciate that. There was a phrase when we had the full screen on you earlier that you said, and the way you said it, I, I thought it was funny too, because it was cool. You said, uh, Jim, keep it big, meaning the screen. Oh. <laughs> and I said, I like that. I like that. that that's great. That's great for uh, keep promos. Jim, a, keep it yeah. big. <laughs> I love that. It's all in how you look at it, right? Right. You be well, my friend. Go make a sandwich. Okay. You've earned it. Good night, Jim. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you for being here. Good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are. <laughs> Good night, hey. Gracie. Good night, Gracie. Greg, thanks again, and we'll welcome you back soon, I hope. I hope too. 
All right. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Greg Goldston, legendary mime, um, extraordinary. Been doing this for a long time. Uh, worked with Marcel Marceau, one of the greatest, uh, if not the, on planet Earth. And uh, amazing stories behind the scenes, lots of levity. And you got a chance to see him not only, you know, in video form, but uh, on stage doing his thing, but also he did a lot of things impromptu with that stage right behind him, which I thought was so cool. And that's what we do at the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. Every show is unique. Every show is something different, special, something for everybody here. Variety is the spice of life. I wouldn't want to do a series where it's just the same topics, the same type of guest, the same type of vibe every single day, something unique, something special. So when you binge watch the episodes, you get something fresh, you get something different uh, from me and from all the guests and from your participation as well. And I think it's really a full circle experience. This was very cool. We really appreciate his time and we'll have him back as well. World renowned mime and teacher, Greg Goldston joining us here live from New York City with lots of humor and again, some extraordinary artistry before our eyes. He's a big fan of our show. He was telling me he's been watching the episodes. You know, a lot of our guests, if they've not, if I don't know them personally and they're coming on the show, because a lot of them I do know personally, or we all become friends. So many of our guests don't just come through Lovety Hall here and disappear. We become friends. We stay connected and they want to come back on the show. But he said, I've been watching the episodes, Jim, and enjoying what you're doing and just the whole vibe. And I really appreciate that. Class act, Greg Goldston joining us here, world-renowned mime and teacher extraordinaire. And again, there he is with the incredible Marcel Marceau. And we paid homage to him as well. We even talked about Shields and Yarnell. Yeah, this was cool. If you enjoyed it, again, give us a thumbs up on our YouTube channel. Click the thumbs up. Leave a comment for us as well. Uh, there's a big thumbs up. Again, it looks like this. Maybe it's not as gold and sparkly as it is on our show, but uh, it's a big thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe, and we thank you for that as well. Wow. Really, really extraordinary. Again, amazing people who've been coming through have been joining us as we've been also uh, celebrating our three-year anniversary. And we appreciate everybody who's been doing that. All the guests, all the viewers, and it means truly the world to me. Very busy day today. It was I had a major television shoot that was an all-day TV shoot all day long. And it was really, really cool. And um, so nice to have some time with you, our faithful audience here all around the world on the Gym Masters Show Live. All right, we're going to scoot out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Spread the word. Share the uh, YouTube episode links on your social media. Help us grow. We've just reached some extraordinary milestones in viewership, subscribers, and uh, so much more as we work so hard. Again, uh, one of the things about our series is the consistency, right? Uh, over three years now, constantly pumping out all this content for all of you uh, in a, as consistent way as possible with all the other things we do in our lives. It's been extraordinary. So cool stuff, gang. Thanks for being here. And we don't say uh, goodbye around here necessarily. We say see you later. Ciao, cheers. Shalom. Arvita Zain. Hasta la vista. Moy loop. Hejda. Slancha. Sayonara, cheerio, be well, take care. Love one another, take care of one another, and we will see you on the next episode. Got a lot of great guests uh, coming up in store for all of you right here on the Gym Masters Show Live. Love you all, take care. Thanks for being with us from all of us at the Gym Masters Show Live. We'll see you on the next episode. Take care. This was fun. Bye. So I'm going to do some mime acting and just sort of disappear. I'm going to fade to black. I'm just going to go we're going to play the credits. You'll see the credits roll. The gym masters, uh, singers and orchestra will take us out and we will wrap this episode and we'll do that in three, two, one. Cheers. <laughs>